In this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion of Laplace transforms, and specifically, we're going to discuss the Dirac delta function. So first, let's introduce the unit impulse function. So delta sub a of t minus t naught is defined as a piecewise function, where it's 0 if t is between 0 and t naught minus a. It's 1 over t t 2 times a if t naught minus a is less than or equal to t is less than t naught plus a. And it's equal to 0 if t is greater than or equal to t naught plus a. So if you think about the graph of this function, uh, it's a straight line at 0. And then in between t naught minus a and t naught plus a, it jumps up to a plateau of value 1 over 2a. And then it jumps back down to 0. And as a, as the value of a gets smaller and smaller, that means that the denominator of 1 over 2a is going to get small and that's going to force this function delta to go towards infinity. All right, and that's what leads us to the Dirac delta function. When that a value gets smaller and smaller and we get that spike of infinity, that's called the Dirac delta function. So the Dirac delta function, delta of t minus t naught, is equal to infinity when t equals t naught and it's equal to zero if t does not equal t naught. And just like all units, unit uh, functions, uh, the inter integral from zero to infinity of delta of t minus t naught is gonna be equal to one. All right, so if we wanna take the Laplace transform of the Dirac delta function, we're gonna use the following theorem. As long as t naught is greater than zero, then the Laplace transform of delta of t minus t naught is going to equal e to the negative s times t naught. Or you could think of it as e to the negative t naught s. So let's apply that to some examples. For our first example, we want to find the Laplace transform of the Dirac delta function at t minus 12. So our t naught value is 12 here. We'll just plug that into the formula this Laplace transform is going to be e to the negative 12s. All right, a second example. This time we want to find the Laplace transform of the Dirac delta function of t minus 3 plus 5. So we'll take the Laplace transform of each of these terms. For the Dirac delta function of t minus 3, our t naught is equal to 3. So we'll get e to the negative 3s. And then the Laplace transform of 5 will be 5 over s. All right, so now let's solve some initial value problems that involve the Dirac delta function. For our first example, we have y prime minus 3y equals the Dirac delta function of t minus 2. So just like we do when we're solving initial value problems with Laplace transforms, we're going to start by taking the Laplace transform of everything. So the Laplace transform of y prime minus 3 times the Laplace transform of y will equal the Laplace transform of delta of t minus 2. That's going to give us s times big Y of s minus y of 0, minus 3 times big Y of s. And then with the Dirac delta function, we're going to get e to the negative 2s. We know that our initial condition is y of 0 equals 0, so that middle term is going to go away. We can factor out the big Y of s to get big Y of s times s minus 3 equals e to the negative 2s. To get big Y of s by itself, we're going to divide by s minus 3. So big Y of s equals e to the negative 2s over s minus 3. And then once we have solved for our big Y of s, we'll take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides. So the inverse Laplace transform of big Y of s will equal the inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative 2s over s minus 3. All right, we see that exponential in s, so e to the negative 2s, that should be a clue that we're going to need to use our second translation theorem, or translation in t on the t-axis. So if we take our inverse Laplace transform of big Y, we're going to get little y of t. e to the negative 2s is going to give us the heavy side function at t minus 2, and it's going to translate the inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus 3 from t to t minus 2. If we take the inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus 3, we're going to get y of t equals the heavy side of t minus 2 
times e to the 3t translated from t to t minus 2. And then finally, we'll apply our translation. So y of t equals the heavy side function of t minus 2 times e to the 3 t minus 2. And that'll be the solution to our initial value problem. All right, let's look at a second example. So this time we have y prime plus y equals the Dirac delta function of t minus 1 with an initial condition y of 0 equals 2. Again, we'll start by taking the Laplace transform of all of our terms. So the Laplace transform of y prime plus the Laplace transform of y equals the Laplace transform of the delta function of t minus 1. This is going to give us s times big Y of s minus y of 0 plus big Y of s equals e to the minus s. Our initial condition y of 0 is equal to 2, so we'll plug that in. That gives us s big Y of s minus 2 plus big Y of s equals e to the negative s. We can combine the like terms on the left-hand side. We could factor out that big Y of s. So we get big Y of s times s plus 1 minus 2 equals e to the negative s. And then we'll move that the 2 to the other side. So big Y of s times s plus 1 equals e to the negative s plus 2. To get big Y by itself, we'll divide both sides by s plus 1. So big Y of s equals e to the minus s over s plus 1 plus 2 over s plus 1. And now that we have big Y of s by itself, we need to move on and take the inverse Laplace transform. So if we take the inverse Laplace transform of all of these terms, we got the inverse Laplace of big Y of s equals the inverse Laplace of e to the negative s over s plus 1 plus the inverse Laplace of 2 over s plus 1. So the inverse Laplace of big Y of s will be little y of t. Again, we see that exponential in s, so that's going to tell us to use our second translation theorem. So we're going to have u of t minus 1 times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s plus 1 translated from t to t minus 1. And the inverse Laplace of 2 over s plus 1 is going to be 2e to the minus t. So we'll take this inverse Laplace of 1 over s plus 1. That's going to give us e to the minus t. And we'll apply our translation to get y of t equals u of t minus 1 times e to the negative t minus 1 plus 2e to the negative t. So that'll be the solution to our initial value problem. All right, for another example, we have y double prime plus 2y prime plus y equals the Dirac delta of t minus 1 with initial conditions y of 0 equals 0 and y prime of 0 equals 0. We'll start by taking the Laplace transform of all of our terms. So the Laplace transform of y double prime plus 2 times the Laplace transform of y prime plus the Laplace transform of y will equal the Laplace transform of the Dirac delta function at t minus 1. So when we take these Laplace transforms, we'll get s squared big Y of s minus s y of 0 minus y prime of 0 plus 2 times s big Y of s minus y of 0 plus big Y of s equals e to the negative s. We know that our initial conditions y of 0 equals 0 and y prime of 0 equals 0. So all of those extra terms on the left hand side are going to go away, giving us s squared big Y of s plus 2s big Y of s plus big Y of s equals e to the negative s. We can factor the big Y out. So big Y of s times s squared plus 2s plus 1 equals e to the negative s. And then we'll divide by the quadratic. So big Y of s is e to the negative s over s squared plus 2s plus 1. We can factor our denominator out. So big Y of s is e to the minus s over s plus 1 squared. So this is our big Y of s. To finish the problem, we're going to take the inverse Laplace transform. So big Y of s is equal to e to the negative s over s plus 1 squared. We'll take the inverse Laplace of both sides. So the inverse Laplace of big Y of s equals the inverse Laplace of e to the minus s over s plus 1 squared. So the e to the minus s 
tells us we're going to use the second translation theorem. The fact that I see a s plus 1 inside another function, so inside the squared function, that means I can rewrite this with translation in s, which would be the first translation theorem. So we're going to use both translation theorems on this problem. So y of t is going to equal the inverse Laplace of e to the minus s over s squared translated from s to s plus 1 using the second translation theorem e to the minus s is going to give us a heavy side function of t minus 1 and it'll translate the overall result from t to t minus 1 so y of t equals the heavy side function of t minus 1 times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared translated from s to s plus 1 and then that's going to be translated from t to t minus 1 so this is going to give us y of t equals the heavy side function of t minus 1. The inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared will give us t. The translation from s to s plus 1 will give us e to the minus t. And we're going to translate that from t to t minus 1. If we apply our translation, we get y of t equals the heavy side function of t minus 1 times t minus 1 times e to the negative t minus 1. And so that'll be the solution to our initial value problem.